We're still talking about measurement. Now we're going to talk about temperature and temperature around the world. This is lesson 8.12. The world is split into two parts. A northern hemisphere, that's up here, and the southern hemisphere, that's down here. And they're split by a line called the equator. See that? It's the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And the seasons of the northern hemisphere are the opposite of the seasons of the southern hemisphere because of the tilt of the earth. So here is the sun and it's shining on the earth and here's the North Pole and here's the South Pole and you can see it's kind of tilted like this. It's not straight up and down, it's tilted. See that? And the equator is going on an angle like this. So the Northern Hemisphere is getting more sunlight in June. See that? And the Southern Hemisphere isn't. And that's why the seasons are opposite. It's because of the tilt of the Earth when the sun is shining. Well, temperature is a measure of hot or cold. We can use a thermometer to take our body temperature, right? If we think we have a fever, our moms can get a thermometer and take our body temperature. We can use an outdoor thermometer to find out how hot or cold it is outside. And temperature is measured in Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's pronounced Fahrenheit. See how it's got an H here in front of the R? Or Celsius. The C-E says S. See that? The United States uses Fahrenheit, and there's a few little islands. If you look at my pink dots, here's Hawaii, that's Alaska, we got the Canary Islands, and we've got Burma over here, see? Tiny little pink dots, those are little islands, they use Fahrenheit also, but the rest of the world uses Celsius, okay? So United States uses Fahrenheit and the rest of the world pretty much uses Celsius, all right? The abbreviation for Fahrenheit is an F. See? It's a capital F. And the abbreviation for Celsius is a capital C. When you look at a thermometer, we can see this red liquid here. See that? When it's at zero degrees Celsius, this side of the numbers on the thermometer is Celsius and this side is Fahrenheit. For Celsius, when it's at zero and Fahrenheit when it's at 32, that's where water freezes. That's when it's very cold, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. So remember, this side is Fahrenheit, you can see the F, and this side is Celsius. 90 degrees Fahrenheit is very hot, and that would be like around 32 degrees Celsius. See that? So our thermometer up here would be, it's very hot outside, here it's warm outside, and if it's down here, it's going to be very cold. So depending on where that red liquid is, is going to tell us how hot warm or cold it is outside. The warmer the temperature gets, the more the red liquid rises. And we can read the temperature by where the red liquid m meets the lines. See? The red liquid goes right up to the line where the 90 degrees Fahrenheit is, so you know it's 90 degrees. See? Now, the reason the red liquid is actually rising is because the molecules inside are heating up and making it expand and because it's in a glass tube the only way the liquid can expand is by going up. Well, that's science. Let's stick to math, okay? So some thermometers are marked in units of fives. So here's a th thermometer for Fahrenheit. We can see the F here. We can see the numbers and there's not that many lines, are there? There's just a few lines. And we can see how it skip counts by tens. See, it goes from 0 to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And there's only one line in between them. Well, in between each one would be a 5. So 10 and 5 would be 15, then 20, then 25, then 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 
55. So this one is in between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This would be 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Each mark is a 5, see? And it skips counts by 5s. Well, some are marked in units of 2s. Each mark is a 2, and you skip count by 2s. So if you look at this one, here's the 60 Fahrenheit, and it went up one little mark. So that's 62, because on this thermometer, each little mark is a 2. Over here, we're at 10, and 2 more is 12, and 2 more is 14, and 2 more is 16. See? 10, 12, 14, 16. So this would be 62 degrees Fahrenheit and 16 degrees Celsius. All right? So what we're doing is we find the closest 10 that it passed, and then we count up. This just passed the 70, and this is marked by 5s. So we do 70 and 5 more. This is 75 degrees Fahrenheit we see the F up there. See that? We find the closest 10 that it just passed and count up. On the Fahrenheit side, on this side, it just passed the 70 and this is going by 2, so this would be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. See? For Celsius, it just passed the 20 and we add 2, so it's 22 degrees Celsius. See? Here's a Celsius thermometer. We find the closest 10 that it just passed, and we count up. It just passed 30. This one's in increments of 5, so we're going to add the 5, and we have 35 degrees Celsius. See? So let's do some critical thinking. Bob wants to walk to the store. Should he wear a coat? Well, we need to look at the temperature outside to figure out if Bob should wear a coat. So here's Fahrenheit and here's Celsius. It says it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's 20 degrees outside, should Bob wear a coat? Well, let's peek at our chart over here, okay? With the, let's bring this over with us, okay? So we know that this is the hot area, this is the warm area, and this is the cold area, okay? And his thermometer says it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's the Fahrenheit side. We look for the 20. Ooh, that's in the cold section, isn't it? So yes, he should wear a coat, shouldn't he? He doesn't want to freeze, right? How about this one? Emma wants to go to the lake. Should she bring her swimming suit or her ice skates? Well, let's look at the temperature. Fahrenheit is 80 degrees. Celsius is 20, 22, 24, 26. So it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 26 degrees Celsius. So if we look at the 80 degrees Fahrenheit and we look on our hot, warm, cold chart, and we see that 80 is right there. See it? In the green, in the warm. So it would be too warm to go ice skating, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be any ice on the lake. So she should bring her swimming suit to go to the lake, shouldn't she? It's not cold enough for her ice skates. There's no ice. It's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. See that? All right, let's see if you can answer this one. If it's winter in the northern hemisphere, what season is it in the Southern Hemisphere? Is it winter or summer? Now, do you remember what we said in the beginning? We said that the seasons of the Northern Hemisphere are opposite of the seasons of the Southern Hemisphere because of the tilt of the Earth. Okay? So, if we look at this question again, if it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, what season is it in the Southern Hemisphere? Well, it wouldn't be the same season, would it? It would be the opposite. And the opposite of winter with ice and snow and cold would be summer with heat and warmth, wouldn't it? So our answer would be summer. That's the opposite. 
So the hemispheres, the northern and southern hemispheres, have opposite seasons, okay? When the leaves are falling off the trees, for us, they're having springtime and their flowers are just starting to grow. Isn't that weird how they're opposites and how the sun hits the earth and makes it opposite? All right? We're going to continue talking about measurement, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope this helped, and I'll see you next video. Bye.